down in Tennessee where freedom is alive. You hear shots ring from the woods. Take on 45. <laughs> yes, life is good, and I am always shooting in the woods. Yes, Hickok 45, shooting some stealth weapons. Is it a weapon? Well, there we go again with that word. It's really not a weapon for me. But anyway, welcome to Middle Tennessee, Hickok 45, your internet shooting companion, coming to you from the beautiful woods of Middle Tennessee, the home of Jack Daniels, Alvin York, Dolly Parton, many others, yes, and sadly it uh, was the home of Jeff Quinn, and uh, you know he passed away, we'll talk a little bit about that, okay, sad, sad week in Tennessee, big loss, the home, yes, the home of uh, Jeff Quinn, I should have listed him at the top, okay, let me shoot one more arrow, can I do that, all right, <laughs> yeah, I was in the mood to do a little archery, and plus I'm out here a little early. I don't shoot usually a really, really early in the morning, and uh, I just thought I'd shoot some arrows for a change, because I do a lot of arrow slinging and uh, trying to beat the rain as well, and this may be a two-part Sunday shoot-around, because we might get rained out for real. I said that the last two weeks. I think because rain has come and gone and all that, and it looks like it's going to rain, which I like, really. It's cloudy. And if you've done any filming outside, you really, ideally, you want all sun, all sunshine everywhere, or a cloudy day really works better, okay? I are an expert. I know about these things. Uh, worked in Hollywood for a lot of years, right? But it really is. A cloudy day is ideal for filming. Uh, for us, anyway, I don't know, maybe not everybody, uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, so it really might be a, a two-part Sunday shoot-around, oh, how tragic would that be, yeah, yeah, I, uh, you, you, most of you have already heard, some of you, you know, younger people, maybe you don't, don't know Jeff Quinn, uh, Jeff Quinn, first of all, a great guy, you know, rest in peace, we'll really miss him, uh, I had met him uh, several times, chatted with him several times, of course. We were always at the NRA meeting or SHOT Show things, and I see him and talk to him, and I've talked to him over the phone a few times. And He and I almost hooked up and went to a, uh, a shoot one time, didn't do it. We chatted on the phone a few times, and uh, uh, so I'm not, not, a, uh, not his best buddy or anything, even though he lives in Tennessee. Uh, I don't know, I guess he was about... 45 minutes from me or something. I cut mean to get up there. Last time I texted him, I said, we need to grab lunch. I'll run up there and we'll grab lunch, you know, sometime. And we hadn't done that, of course. He's busy, I'm busy. We're uh, on, uh, he, he's busier. He always was busier than, than, than me in a lot of ways, uh, I think with a lot of traveling. But uh, anyway, a, a good guy, first and foremost, a great guy, you know, uh, you know just, just a great, good, good old fella, really. I uh, used to make fun of him being older than me, you know, and he really wasn't. He was like almost 10 years younger than I was. But uh, anyway, if you don't know Jeff Quinn, he he started along with his brother, Bogue. Really, they're the pioneers in doing sort of this kind of thing. They uh, put a more or less a gun magazine, I guess you'd call it, a website up like, gosh, 99, year 2000. Long in there, uh, I shared uh, the video uh, Bo, Jeff's brother, uh, put up uh, I think Tuesday of this week uh, and uh, on Facebook and I think even on YouTube on a posted 
pen comment, I think, I don't know. But anyway, you know, look it up. And, and uh, he goes into some things about Jeff and everything. And he had diabetes and had, I think, had taken his leg off and some things, different things. He'd had a rough time in the last few years. But uh, I, I saw him at uh, it was SHOT Show, I believe. And uh, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was SHOT Show. And uh, I don't know, I lose track. Of it. But it wasn't all that long ago. And was surprised to see him. He seemed to be feeling a lot better and was around and everything. And so, but uh, just a good guy. And uh, anyway, we'll miss him and we're sure sorry for his family and man. Uh, going that early and that young, really. Uh, I know when I was a young person, I used to think 50 was really old, you know. But you all know my birthday now if you're watching the Sunday shoot-arounds, you know, my age. And I don't even feel old, you know, at my age, which is 39, right? You know, you should know that by now. At least my human age. And, uh, you know, Jeff was, uh, he was born in six. Uh, 59, I believe I, I saw or something like that. Uh, but man, uh, it's a, such a shame. Uh, the good they die young, as they say. You know, uh, you know, trite phrase, but so often it's it's true. It seems like uh, just. But anyway, Jeff Quinn Gunblast uh, dot com. You know, was a site I used to use that in uh, searching around. You know, I had a, a very active internet life before YouTube. Uh, because I've had a very active shooting life for a long time, and my whole life almost, all my adult life for sure, and well, my teenage life, you know, shooting and, and everything. But uh, I was, I spent a lot of time on Glock Talk and and uh, some of the more popular forums uh, at the time before YouTube or anything. And 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 Gun Blast was a great place to get information, okay, about firearms, and it was kind of unique. Yeah, you know, so. Anyway, uh, we'll sure miss Jeff, and uh, it's, you know, no one else to say, just hate it, just hate it, uh, good guy, and he'll really, really be missed. Many of you knew him better than I uh, that are in the industry, perhaps, because I know he went to so many of the uh, new gun releases and those kinds of things, which we don't really go to, but I know he was at a lot of those and a lot of you gun writers and other people in the YouTube world and do, who do videos and blogging and everything. Uh, you, you probably knew him really well. So even though he's in Tennessee, I didn't know him as well as many of you. And uh, so I don't know. Anyway, I, it's a shame. But Jeff Quinn, gunblast.com, uh, you know, passed away this week. And it's uh, sad, sad about that. So. Anyway, good guy. I, I was at a really story. Uh, it was either a shot show or NRA meeting, and uh, sometimes at those, uh, you know, we do a, we do meet and greets at, at the federal booth, usually in the SDI booth, uh, and uh, even the buds, uh, the thing that have in connection with the NRA uh, uh, Firearms for Freedom Foundation thing. But uh, we always do a uh, meet and greet at the the federal premium uh, booth this outdoor and and sometimes it's a pretty elaborate affair you know and uh, stage and uh, sometimes and usually we'll address the the crowd that comes around for the meet and greet and talk to them a little bit and do some q a question and answers before uh we, we we sign things and shake hands and all that and get pictures and uh i know it, it's about a couple of years ago i guess three maybe uh uh there was a there's a pretty good crowd and there was a line over here of people who had kind of gathered, probably wondering who that idiot you know, up there talking, you know. But but I saw Jeff around the front. He was right there, you know, and I was talking to people and answering questions. And I I uh, tried to embarrass him. He's like me, probably unembarrassable. But uh, I uh, I pointed him out. Hey, there's Jeff from Gunblast. Jeff Quinn from uh, Gunblast.com. Y'all know him, of course. I said, and I I said I've been watching him learning about firearms from him since I was in middle school. You know, he's obviously a lot older than I am, and uh, he's just one of my men. I just really <laughs> laid on there. And he's a good sport. He's a good sport. He knew he was younger than I am, and everybody knew I was younger than, or older than him, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, he had long hair and, uh, you know, and, and gray hair, and, it, and sometimes that does, you, you're not sure how old somebody is, you know, when they have a lot of long gray hair, you know. So that's why I keep mine short. So I can look like I'm 39, but 
But anyway, Jeff's a good guy, and sorry, uh, man, that we lost him. Uh, and what else? Um, well, you know what? Uh, I'm out doing some archery. John and I have been, been doing a lot of this lately. He finally got into it. I think I told you. I've been into it for 20 years and traditional archery for almost that long and tried over the years to kind of get him interested. Got him a bow when he was young and everything. He sort of, you know, he likes it okay, but he just never did really take to it. But recently he has. And he's got a bow, a nice bow, and he shoots. And, and we shoot almost every time he comes out. We do uh, some archery and before we do a firearms video. And we shoot all kinds of targets. We train the deer on my place. You know, they're accustomed to gunfire, and so they're really tame. We've trained them to stand very, very still, like this one, and just accept the pain, okay? I think they were all former Navy SEAL deer, and they just are tough. You know, they, they accept the pain, and they endure it. Look, watch him. See? He shakes a little bit when he gets hit and grimaces just ever so slightly. Uh, but, oh, I did take his mask. He was wearing a mask. You know, I mean, you know, masks are important these days. He was wearing one. I took it off. Uh, my grandson, Davey, and I, we put it on him uh, <laughs> last time we were over here. <laughs> uh, I thought he would get a kick out of that, right? So uh, we want our deer protected. And in fact, uh, I hey, I expect that to come down pretty soon. Uh, probably a Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency uh, mandate that all deer must wear uh, masks. No, not picking on TWRA, just, just picking on government, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just I, so I'd shoot some air, so not a lot of noise, not a lot of noise. Uh, I might uh, come out at 5 o'clock in the morning and do a Sunday shoot around sometime with my bow. And I've got my, my four-wheeler, so I can set up my little table here anywhere I want to. And I, I didn't put everything. Yeah, man, and of course, Talon gun grips, I might get them to make me a glove, you know? Maybe they could, oh, or put, oh, I know, they could do bow grips. Some people put kind of a grip around their uh, riser on their bow. <laughs> Appreciate them. And ballastall.com. I do spray some ballastall often on my uh, arrows, by the way, on the tips. And uh, it, it, I've done that for years, in fact. I found some other stuff that's designed for that. But if I don't have it, what's it called? Oh, man. Uh... I'll, I'll mention it sometime if you've not discovered it. It's, it's good. It's a little thicker. Some one of you recommended it to me, right? Yeah, you know, uh, a few weeks ago. So I ordered some, and it does work well. If I don't have it around, I'll spray some. I always have ballistol around. I'll spray some of that on. I've done that for years. Uh, lube them up. But when you're shooting targets like this, and that helps too on bag targets. But uh, it helps you pull them out. Okay, so. And that's the beauty with archery. Uh, it's a great time to be into archery these days. Uh, well, for the last 15, 20 years. Uh, because the target technology has come along. The, the bags are wonderful. People used to use styrofoam and things like that. It's tough to pull out of, and that stuff was a mess all the time. If you could find a big block of styrofoam. And uh, there have always been targets. Uh, I think people used to use cotton-filled targets. They're very, they very expensive, I think, lots of times. But there have been targets for it. Uh, now, I mean, any bag you pick up for 30 40 bucks, you know, at a, just a big discount sporting goods store, it works usually really well, okay? And uh, I've got several of those. And then these, there's varying degrees of the animals. They're, they're, uh, some are easier to pull out of than others. The, the kill zone, I'm sorry, did I offend anybody? But the the uh, the insert, which is kind of the kill zone, I don't know if you can see it on that one, uh, but they, uh, that part of, of the animal is a kind of an easy pull thing. They're designed, they're just a little softer and they're not too hard to pull out of. And uh, even the whole animals have gotten better. Some animals, almost wherever you hit them, like the Reinhardts, almost wherever you hit them, it, it, you can get the arrow out without too much trouble. Some others are, are, can be kind of tough if you don't hit the insert, but uh, but really, if, now I don't hunt, as you know, but, but now a hunter, you should be shooting from a distance where you at least hit the insert, generally, right? So that's kind of where they're designed. You wear out the insert, you can buy another one and put it in there. You shouldn't be hitting the deer 
in the butt, okay, or the head, because that's a bad shot, all right? Let me, I'll shoot him in the butt intentionally. Okay, so you should not be hitting him back there, her, it, whatever. <laughs> and, uh, well, that's a he right there. That one's no question, right? And uh, for those of you in Kentucky, has big antlers, right? I think I'm right about that. <laughs> I'm not a deer hunter and I'm not even an expert, but uh, I'm not even an expert, yeah, right? Like, imagine that, even being close to being an expert. I just know I like to shoot them. And, yeah, it's it's just fun. It's just fun. But the target technology has come a long way. It's, uh, uh, it, it really makes it more fun. Those who don't know, I've, I've talked about this a lot, but arrows can be expensive. These are kind of pricey. I found them. They're made of carbon. They're made to look a little bit like wood, right? Well, if as long as I don't miss a lot and lose it, and I'm shooting targets so I can pull them back out of, and I'm not hitting trees and things, this arrow right here, like those shots I took, yeah, I haven't done any damage to those arrows. Uh, I could shoot, uh, theoretically, I could shoot this arrow a thousand times into that target, and and wouldn't hurt it at all and so it's a really inexpensive hobby in that sense once you've got your arrows and your bow now these these arrows these these because i just buy them i used to make my arrows put the fletcher on myself inserts tips a uh, knocks and everything i didn't make the aluminum okay <laughs> so you know making an arrow is kind of like you know it's like uh building an AR or something, you know, Daniel Defense might build an AR, you and I don't really build one, we assemble one, right? Uh, and that's kind of what I do with arrows. Uh, so I, I, they were, I had about six bucks in those, I think, but I, I just got where I can't do it, I don't have time, I don't even know where my, my tool is, Berkowitz, whatever it is called. <laughs> and uh, I found these and they work, and, but, you know, six of them runs, you know, like 75, 80 bucks, yeah. A lot of money for an arrow, you think, you know, I mean, by tax and shipping and everything else, you're talking, uh, you know, around, uh, you know, 15 bucks an arrow. And that sound, sounds really expensive. Yeah, it is. If, if you're thinking back when you were a kid, you're out shooting, oh, I lost that arrow, yeah, oh, lost another one. Yeah, it could be, right? But, uh, but when you're getting every arrow back virtually and you're shooting the same arrows over and over, and I haven't, let's see, I lost one of these in the last month or two that I didn't find. I know where it is, but it went in a bunch of high stuff and I'm just, I'm just not going in there until I am really sprayed up with tick spray. You know, and I've got a, a, a rubber suit, jumpsuit, you know, and a, a seal around my head. <laughs> I'm going to go into there. I know, I know where it is. It's not even far from the house. I just, uh, I just, yeah, you know, I don't want to wade into there and get a tick uh, or get a lot of ticks just to get this air. I know right where it is. <laughs> I'll get it in the fall, right? No, but that, that's really the only one I've lost. Uh, so John's not, we found almost all of them. John's lost one, two, maybe, uh, but we end up finding them. So it's not as expensive as it sounds. All right, little archer, can I shoot again? I'm going to be in trouble if I have to go and get my arrows. You won't be able to hear me. All right. Okay. So we'll have some silent time. We may do that. Yeah, pretty neat, pretty neat. So what am I gonna talk about? Well, I've been to the beach this week, okay? Uh, yeah, I've been to the beach. I was a bad boy. Uh, went down to Panama City. In fact, met a lot of you down there. So uh, you were down there too. Don't act like we shouldn't be going to the beach. So. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't really get people's names, but uh, it, it was good to see you, okay? Uh, all the folks we met uh, going, coming, and then down at the beach and restaurants and different things. Uh, so, uh, appreciate it. Uh, saying hi, like I always say, always come up and say hi. It's not a problem. Um, you know, so uh, anyway, uh, good to see you all. And the uh, ocean or the gulf, I call it the ocean. I think it's connected to the ocean, isn't it? The Gulf of Mexico? Yeah, it might be, right? I'll have to get out my map. But I guess you could say by that logic that uh, the Cumberland River 
uh, over here is also the ocean because it's connected to the Gulf, which is connected to the Atlantic Ocean or the ocean, <laughs> right? But, uh, and when you get to a certain size, you know, it's kind of ocean and there's sharks out there probably. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's neat. Uh, I know a lot of people regard Panama City as the, that's the Redneck Riviera, you know, that's the, the Redneck Beach kind of thing. I tell you what, I've been to beaches on the West Coast, East Coast, uh, all around Florida and, and, and around and, uh, in the South of France. No, I haven't been to the South of France. But, uh, you know, I, Panama City, as far as the beach and everything, I, it is just splendid. You know, it's just gorgeous. And we're, it was just gorgeous beach. You know, the white sand, we are in a nice hotel on the beach and you might have seen that I did a posting uh, on a Instagram, and uh, I got an FAQ we'll post <laughs> I did down there. But uh, uh, it's really nice. Now there are areas I think where it's mostly you know there's a lot of teenagers go down or whatever. You know, really young people, and it, it can be kind of a crazy area. But if you get out far enough west of that, uh, really really nice beaches. You know, in Destin and around just just depends what you're looking for so uh, anyway had a good time down there the ocean the gulf it's it's uh it's always interesting i ain't been i ain't been to a beach on the big water for i don't know three four years you know and i'm not a beach person per se uh some people live man and, and breathe it. they they'd go every week if they could if it weren't so far away uh i've got a brilliant uh news flash for you the beach is kind of a, a distance away for most people. Yeah, I have looked at a map to, enough to know that. <laughs> so it can be a really long drive, you know, depending on where you live, if you're in you know, North Dakota, right? Um, depending on what beach you're talking about, Lake Beach or whatever. But it's it's a hike, but you know, I'm only about seven, half, eight hours from one of the really nicest beaches around. Yeah, so. Yeah, I should go more often, I guess. But I, uh, I do, I do enjoy it for a few days. After a couple of days, because I'm not going for a tan. You know, I mean, most people, I think, have sort of gotten gone. Oh, I got to get burnt and get a beautiful suntan. Uh, you know, with skin cancer and everything, everybody knows about nowadays. You got to be careful about that. And so, you're know, not paranoid, but you know, he's, you know, he's lying out in the sun. That's not something I'm going to do. I'm going to put sunblocker on. I wear a shirt. I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not lick, looking to pick up women, so I wear a shirt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I saw some quite a few worthy of, uh, you know, get into that. But uh, yeah, a lot of beautiful sights. Let's just put it that way. A lot of beautiful sights. I think my wife had to slap me and pinch me a couple hundred different times, you know, on the beach. But um, yeah, just just nice time at the beach. Uh, my wife likes the beach more than I do, probably. Uh, and it is, it's neat because it's so different, I guess. It's, it's so different uh, than Tennessee <laughs> or the woods. And that, that's always good, whatever it is. I have even enjoyed going to New York City uh, in the past. I haven't been there for a good while. But for a short visit, it just because it's so novel. Wow. People actually live here like this. They live like this, you know. Well, now, now it, it, I'm not interested in going. Uh, I don't think it's quite as neat. Hardly any of the largest cities are as interesting as they maybe once were, you know. But um, so, you know, the novelty of the beach and, and the ocean, of course, is just phenomenal. You, you, you just, it's just, uh, it's unique, isn't it? You stand there and look out over that, and, and boy, if you want to feel small, if your ego is getting a little big, go stand on the beach somewhere and look out and you know and you're just seeing a, a tiny speck of it and it's just enormous right i don't know how many quarts of water in that thing but there's a lot uh you know just the the life forms just the constant i was thinking looking out upon that it's just incredible you know how how important we think we are and life and death and everything and as i look out there there's probably a million literally a million fish you know gobbling up other fish and living and dying and the cycle of life is just uh is going on right there and and 
you know, we think we're so important and, you know, so is that little crab that gets eaten, you know. <laughs> but I mean, just so much going on in that water is, is kind of scary, uh, that's for sure. But uh, just enormous, enormous. Uh, and I might be listening, or uh, you might be listening, uh, someone who has never been to the beach, to the Gulf or the ocean. You ought to go, go sometime. And uh, it's, it's just so, so, in fact, one of you we ran into, you know who you are. You were from Indiana, remember, up near the pier, uh, under the pier. Uh, one morning, I think, I think it was in the morning, and, and you and your girlfriend or wife were walking along, you recognized me, we talked, you had lost your camera or your phone in the ocean, <laughs> I think the day before. And, uh, but, uh, but anyway, your wife or girlfriend had never seen the ocean. And that was her first trip to, to see that. So it was kind of neat. We talked about that. So it's good to meet you all. And, uh, I tried to get my wife to swim out into it as far as she could. She wouldn't do it. You know, especially when they had a warning, uh, about the riptides and you weren't supposed to get in. So I, I didn't really necessarily believe it and I tried to get her to swim you know out there a few hundred yards and just just check it out for me and see if it was really that dangerous but she wouldn't do it so anyway I had had a good time at the beach and uh, good to see you all uh, I don't know what I'm gonna talk about uh, probably nothing can I shoot again you don't have to put your ears on today do you pretty nice oh oh that's the one and I've hit, somehow that one, I hit a rock or something. I did destroy one arrow uh, this spring. I hit a steel stake holding up an alligator at a 3D shoot. <laughs> yeah, at the 3D shoots, as I've said, you see all sorts of animals. Uh, they try to make it fun, entertaining you know, for kids and everybody, big kids like me. Boom. I consider it a successful shot if I hit the thing, if I hear that thud. What you don't want to hear, and John and I hear it occasionally, and, or my buddies I go to the shoots with, uh, uh, hear the arrow glance off the side or miss and be bouncing off rocks and trees, limbs. <laughs> and it's a great sport because uh, I just like throwing darts. It's addictive and uh, just fun to do, just fun to do. Uh, what was I going to talk about? Yeah. Oh uh, well. Well, you know, speaking with uh, uh, or talking about you know, losing Jeff Quinn, he's another person who actually uh, did something uh, with his life, and I think it always reminds us, uh, you know, to ask ourselves maybe, what are we doing? Yeah. Are we doing anything useful? Are we doing anything worthwhile? Uh, are we having fun? Yeah, we should have fun. Are we working hard? Yeah, we probably should be working hard, right? At something, maybe at having fun, right? But uh, are we doing anything worthwhile? Are we gonna leave anything? Uh, what are people gonna say about us when we're gone? Uh, I had a little exercise when I was teaching. It, most of the time I was teaching, the kids were, were younger. Uh, for about three or four years, they were juniors in uh, high school, but uh, most of the time I taught middle school. And I was a little, uh, I don't know, I, was, I, I had a, a little exercise, although it was kind of fun, because I taught literature and you know, thinking and all that, and critical thinking, and I didn't use it much because I, it, it, was, it, I was, it was kind of a downer in a way, but uh, and maybe not appropriate in all cases. I with some you know, parents to just, uh, uh, you know, because when they're not in the class, they don't really understand. It's, you have an assignment or something, it just sounds way more negative than it was, or you know whatever it might be. But I always thought it was a great uh, thing to do, though, and uh, probably should have done it more often. But but like write your own eulogy or something, you know, or or obituary, you know, uh, interesting exercise, you know, uh, you know. Uh, and it, it makes you think about, okay, what, what, what would I write if I was writing my obituary? All right, John Smith, uh, I hit by an 18-wheeler yesterday, whatever, and we're sad to lose him. He is survived by whoever, and then you know, he gets into the part about what that person did in his life. So-and-so 
you know, was a building contractor in Skokie, Illinois, you know, for uh, 20 years and, and, uh, uh, later started a law business or whatever, you know, just, just what that person did, what did they accomplish, you know, uh, not a lot of obituaries were just very, very plain and factual, but if you were going to, uh, speak at somebody's funeral, the things you would say about them, you know, what would you like people to say about you? What would be, you would hope someone would say about you if they were speaking at your funeral, for example, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, it could be, you know, enlightening to some extent or, uh, instructive just to, I think, to think about, about that. We don't live our lives, hopefully, uh, based on what somebody is going to say about us, not, you know, necessarily, but still, if somebody's summing up our, our lives or your life or my life, you know, what, what are they going to, what are they going to say? It's something to think about if you're a young person. What is, what is driving you right now? What are you doing? Is, is your goal to uh, just get attention on Facebook? Yeah. Or just to be dramatic, to get views on something if you're online a lot? I mean, is that, is that your primary objective in life? Yeah, to get attention or something. Okay. And again, I know I sound hypocritical. We get a lot of attention. But, you know, it wasn't because that was... Uh, a motivating factor, really. Oh God, I need attention. Let me do gun videos. You know, it's, it's stuff we're already doing, and then eh, we're gonna put this online. Maybe somebody gets something out of it. You know, again, not to be altruistic, but you know, um, uh, I can live. I can live very, very fine without attention. Uh, but anyway, you know, what are we? What are we doing? What are any of us doing? And uh, it's it's an interesting exercise, I think, to think about. Uh, so I was just reminded of that. You know, when, when, you know, I got the news that, that Jeff passed away. So, something to think about. What would people, what would you like for people to say about you? And be truthful. Of course, when, when we, we do pass away, people tend to remember the good stuff, right? Um, and it's not a time to bring out negative stuff. How low class would that be, right? But, but we're all aware of that. Um, but, you know, so how would people sum up your life? How would you like for them to sum up your life in 50 years or 20 years or 80 years or whatever? You know, something to think about. So how's everybody getting through the uh, pandemic? Everybody surviving? <laughs> I don't know. It's still going on. And uh, hopefully, you know, within some months, you know, we'll, we'll get everything flattened in almost all places around the country. Uh, and uh, get back to normal. Uh, you know, I thought I heard Rand Paul speak. Uh, don't see him as often lately, but I uh, heard him interviewed, and he was talking about how, uh, and you may not like Rand Paul. Uh, I really like him because he's mostly libertarian, but he thinks that way. But he uh, was talking about how, you know, a lot of extreme measures in some places like New York and different places, you know, didn't seem to help all that much necessarily. And he, he thought that uh, this thing is just gonna have to run its course pretty much. Not that you can't, you know, take some measures to protect yourself and all that, but it's just gonna run its course pretty much. You know, there, there's no magic pill to stop it tomorrow. Or, uh, you know, nobody's to blame, you know, for every little thing. And it's gonna, just gonna have to run its course, you know, and I think he's probably right, you know, for the most part. Uh, I tend to, I like to hear him speak, you know, uh, because I, I don't think I've ever heard him. And of course, this tells you politically where, where I am to some extent, you know, I'm more libertarian than, than anything. Uh, I mentioned, uh, that's one reason I don't get into that too much, because I don't, there's no, there's nothing to be gained by alienating a bunch of you people. Uh, you're not as interested in, in hearing politics, uh, party politics from, from people are doing gun videos or, or other things, even though in this format, Sunday shoot around, I, I do get into that something. I mean, I mentioned Greg Gutfield. I like Greg Gutfield. In fact, I got tickets to see him if he ever gets to Nashville. Uh, and uh, it's put, been postponed again uh, twice, uh, his uh, monologues or whatever. So I'm looking forward to seeing him when he gets here. I think it's in March now. Uh, it's been moved. But uh, but, you know, I saw a comment, someone said that he was an idiot or whatever, and, you know, 
a lot of people think he's an idiot, I'm sure. I think he thinks himself as an idiot sometimes. <laughs> he's the funniest guy, one of the funniest guys on the planet, the wittiest guy for sure, even if you don't like his politics. <laughs> but I enjoy Greg Gutfeld and people like that, uh, Rand Paul. Uh, so anyway, hopefully we get through this crazy thing. Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, it was nice being at the beach because it was kind of like going back in time because generally speaking on the beach in the wind, the sun, the humidity, the heat, uh, there's not a lot of benefit wearing a mask and you really don't see people wearing it on the beach. There, I did see a few. I did see a few. Uh, rather comical. But then again, you don't know if someone is like extreme, what, comorbidities, as they call them. So you don't know what someone's health condition is. But, uh, and in the pictures of the beach, and I've taken a few, you got it was crowded, a lot of people there. It looks like everybody's all up together but really, I mean, six feet, you know, on the beach with the wind and the sun, you, you know, probably need to be six feet from somebody. Uh, you know, probably, probably that distance is good, three feet. But uh, it, is, it looks so, so crowded, but you start walking through there. I mean, you got families together or something, but, you know, duh. But people are not, like, they are social distancing by and large. I mean, people generally... Now, everybody doesn't, but most people kind of social distance, I think, just quite naturally. People I don't know, I'm not up in their face. You know, from the camera right now, I'm about, you know, like four feet or something. So if I'm, I'm just talking to somebody in a supermarket, you know, I'm going to be probably this far away from them. Anyway, it's not like the movies where people are up against each other. Yeah, so on the beach, it just appears people are in each other's face. And, of course, you're passing people on the beach and stuff. So I don't know. I don't know can't live forever right so uh what else can i take a couple more shots you know i'm gonna run out of arrows i have three arrows left where do you want me to hit him uh well i'll put another one in his butt how's that because that's a clear area <laughs> all right oh ouch ouch <laughs> i'll put another one now i'll put just to make Make sure you know it was not a fluke. I'll put one in the kill zone area if I can. There we go. That area is where you want to hit. One little measly arrow. So, uh, gosh, let's see. I don't want to take too long on this thing. What else should I talk about? Uh, I, I'll have at least topics that I might talk about, and then I end up not talking about them. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I heard, I heard somebody, one thing I think I've talked about before is uh, I've heard, uh, well, somebody, someone left a comment or they wrote me, I don't know, they said something about to do more shoot in the Sunday shoot around, do more shooting and less political pontification. Well, I guess I pontificate a little bit. I don't see myself as a pontificator, but this is my, my one day a week where I do a little of that, I guess. But... Obviously, that the person uh, probably is less bothered by the fact that I'm talking about politics a little bit as he is about my politics, right? <laughs> it always comes back to that, that line you hear people say occasionally. Whenever you hear this, you know, think of it. They'll say, uh, yeah, I really, I really have a lot of respect for, for that guy. He's not afraid to stand up and speak his mind. Yeah, that guy's really not afraid to say what he, what he thinks. I really have a lot of respect for him. He's willing to stand up, you know, for what he believes, or he's willing to speak out, you know. Well, what they really mean is what? I agree with that person. Yeah, I agree with what he is saying or she is saying, okay? <laughs> I mean, that's just, everybody knows that, but I just like to point that out. Because uh, it's like uh, you're awarding this person a badge of honor, like like they're they're a deity almost, because they're not afraid to speak up and say what's on their mind. All that is is a reflection of the fact that they I agree with them. I like what they're saying. How many people say that when somebody is speaking up and saying something they don't agree with? 
right? There's any just the office. That person should shut up. That person shouldn't really he talks too much. No, I'm not talking about me so much, but it reminds me of that. So, but because generally that's what it is. Generally that's what it is. Uh, if it's talking about religion, you agree with their religious point of view. If it's politics, you agree with their political stance, and you're glad they're standing up. Yeah. You know? Think about your favorite politician that you agree with. Well, it's a senator, congress person, uh, uh, you know, president, whatever, vice president. And they're really ranting uh, about something, and you really like them, and, and you agree with them, and they're really ranting on some topic. Well, naturally, you're loving it. I'm loving it, right? But take the other side of the fence, or a different politician you don't agree with, you think is totally stupid and shallow and idiot, and they're ranting on something. Are, are you going to say that? I really respect that. I really like that guy. I'm so glad he, he gets up and speaks his mind. Yeah. Well, you might because it helps maybe you think, I think, that person to reveal how foolish he or she is. <laughs> so I always, I always like to remind people that. We all know that, though, don't we? We all know that. Uh, it's crazy. So anyway, I think I might just shut up and not take all day on this one, you know. Uh, I'm not going to get rained out, I guess. So we're, we're lucky. You know what I ought to do? I ought to go down and get my arrows. Let me shoot the last one. Can y'all stand a little dead air? I know if I had a lapel mic, uh, man, you do realize the sound wouldn't be as good. It wouldn't be as natural. But uh, uh, for things like this, I might use one. I don't know. In the future, yeah. I'm gonna walk down there. I don't know. We, we do have. We normally use a stereo microphone. That's one reason people have trouble. They put one ear in. Is I make the mistake sometimes myself if I'm kind of previewing something, and it, it uh, the sound is worse because you just got one ear in. That's usually what the issue is. Now this one's a mono. It's not as bad. It's more directional though. Uh, so I'm gonna walk down there, and I won't talk to you too much. But I'm gonna pull those out as quickly as I can, and I'm gonna come back. Okay. Well, you know what I could do? Why didn't I think of that? Why don't I just cut and go get my... Or would you rather see me go get them? You'd probably rather see me go get them. Okay, I'm going to go get them. Okay, y'all think about something profound for a second. I'll run down there. <laughs> and get these arrows. I don't know if you can hear me or not. Huh? All right, the ones in the insert come out easily. Look at that. They come right out. No problem. No problem. <laughs> and these are a little tougher. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Oh, there we go. Run into a tree on field. <laughs> Well, now you're really glad I didn't cut it. I ran my head into that limb, didn't I? I forgot that limb was there. <laughs> Am I bleeding? No. All right, so I got all my arrows back. Okay. Now I can take a couple more shots while I'm gabbing. Uh, so, all right, what else should I talk about? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, let's put an arrow on that guy. Okay, I'm going to go for a good shot here. I'm going to pretend... This shot determines whether I eat or not. Eh, a little fur, fur back than I meant. Let's shoot him again. Boom. That's a little better. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Like I said before, when you get to the point... Where's my ear? Yeah, that's all right. When you get to the point where uh, you can hit a target now... I. Uh, often I'll shoot him a little further away, but, but I think true hunters, they want a shot like this. You don't want a shot way far away. You want to be able to hit within like a pie plate, you know, uh, it's the humane way to do it. And uh, so you don't want to be too much further away, especially hunting. Now, shooting foam deer and foam animals, you, what do you want to do, of course? You want to try to hit it from 100 yards, what difference does it make, right? Uh, I would say someone who's an avid hunter would do uh, probably, oh, I did cut my ear, would do less of that. Would probably do less of that. Uh, maybe I'll use the deer's mask to, yeah, see, I drew my own blood. You want to see it? How's that? Can you tell? <laughs> a 
the pain I go through for you all. It doesn't hurt, but yeah, it's bleeding, I think. Yeah, oh, it is bleeding. Uh, ears, ears tend to bleed a lot too. Did you know that? If you cut them. <laughs> all right. Maybe I can sue one of you all. I sue all of you. You got a class action suit, lawsuit. Because I drew blood while you all were watching. And I would not have done that if y'all hadn't been watching. You know, we weren't making this video. Makes sense to me. So uh, anyway, if there's anything else important you want me to talk about, I'll do it. But, uh, oh, I know one thing that came to mind this week I thought I should uh, pontificate on. The, uh, if you notice how news programs, you know, got to hit the media, right, every week almost. Uh, they, uh, they make themselves seem, that, well, they, they know how important they think they are. But what I love are these little promos for uh, Channel 4 is one of them, well, NBC, when I think about, but all of them do it locally and nationally. They, uh, they do these, of course, they're, they're there for you, for us, right? Yeah, they're there for us. They keep reminding us of that. And their people are so credible. And they show uh, shots of them out working in the community, you know, helping uh, people of all races, of course, and nationalities, you know, everything they can imagine, the whole cross section they're out there helping with. And uh, it's the, uh, I guess it's the one NBC, Lester Holt, I guess. And I think it's like kind of, it's done in kind of a black and white. I believe you've probably seen it if you watch network at all. And uh, uh, you know, it's just it's just the music. I mean, they 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 really they try to build up their anchors to seem like saints. They really do how they care for you so much. They care for everybody. And all this footage of them helping uh, this person and that person and being all over the world, that makes them that just makes them so much more credible. And to some extent it does. If they, every word that came out of their mouths wasn't following some agenda. So, you know, it makes no difference to me if they've been all over the world and really even how many people they help. You know, if you're furthering an agenda, uh, a political agenda I don't agree with and, and I think is actually damaging to the country, you know, I couldn't care less. <laughs> how smart you are, uh, how wise you think you are, and how many people you've helped. I'm sorry. It, it just doesn't. It just doesn't matter. Uh, that, it just doesn't matter. You know, you know, it, it shades everything you know that a person has done. Uh, there have been some really. There are people who have done some really uh, great things in a lot of ways, but they are extremely anti-gun. They want to, they would kill the Second Amendment if, uh, if they had their way. And so if, uh, I hate it, but in a way it, it just negates, cancels out everything they've done in my mind. It doesn't really cancel it out, but it, uh, it, it throws them into to a, a pile of people that uh, are just emotion driven and want to take our rights away and you know so i'm sorry you've done this that was great and that that was great because in my mind you know I, I don't have a lot of use for you you know it's good you've done some things in your life you know other than just be a parasite on society or humanity but wow so anyway how'd i get off on all that but anyway i always think that's interesting all your local news stations do it all your national news stations do it you know even the cable channels just every you know they just do that uh try to build their credibility up. And for me, it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. So let me take a couple more shots, let you go. Hope everybody's managing their lives well and you're not sitting around uh, off work and going into deep debt and ordering stuff, <laughs> right? Yeah, it can happen, it can happen. Everything, everything on the planet is basically a click away, right? A click away. Uh, <laughs> if, if you're doing that, you need to, oh, uh, you need to, uh, I'm not a financial advisor, but you need to uh, maybe check out Dave Ramsey or uh, some of the financial shows and make sure you're, 
you're being smart about things. Not just Dave Ramsey, there's a lot of them. Uh, we've got some people here locally. Uh, well, they're national, but what was it? The Money, the Money Guy Show, I think it's called. A couple of guys do that. They're out of Franklin, Tennessee, and out there where I used to live. And uh, they, have, they have some great videos. Uh, there's a guy locally, frankly, he's a former student of mine many moons ago. Uh, uh, Roy Matlock Jr. has a show on here. I think it's Sunday afternoons, a financial show. There's just a lot of that on, online, as you know. And oh, Paul Winkler, another local person, just really a national. I guess they're national, but uh, I mean, if you do videos and you have a po or you have a podcast or whatever, no matter where you live, right? Uh, so anyway, there's a lot of good stuff out there. If you're a young person and you don't know anything about finances or investing or anything, it's really not as mysterious as it appears. I used to be a dummy about it all when I was in my 20s, really. And it, it's not that, that difficult. Ooh, almost shot high. You know, listen to some of those shows, uh, the, the ones who are not trying to sell you anything. They're only trying to sell you, they want you to watch them. That's where they make their money. Uh, and, you know, they're not uh, trying to get you to invest in some, uh, you know, stock plan that they have, okay? They're... Uh, you, you base my opinion is by large you want you want to pay a financial advisor you want you want them to make their money from you you go to them for some advice because if they tell you oh no I can, I can give you free advice or I can yeah no I'm I'm taking care of my by whatever you know you don't want that because that's what they're going to sell you right there we go yeah it feels good but anyway yeah don't uh, sit around the house and if you're unemployed and uh, click too many times on Amazon right? <laughs> or gun broker or whatever. Boom. I can do this all day. It's fun. It really is. Uh, it's another thing you might want to consider. You know, archery. I highly recommend traditional archery. Uh, it's a lot more fun. I've done both. Now, it's it kind of like firearms. If you, if you, and I've, I've noticed this with a lot of people, observe this, nobody's right, nobody's wrong. But people who are hunters primarily, they love hunting. That's their endeavor. If you look at the firearms they use, they, 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 they couldn't even maybe tell you, they've never held a, a Glock maybe, or a Colt single action. They, they don't know about a German Mauser. They couldn't tell you anything about it. They, they, they've got a, a nice hunting rifle or two, and maybe several. And hunting is their thing. Traveling to hunt or whatever, that's their thing. They're not really gun people, okay? So that firearm really is a tool, kind of like a carry gun is. You don't want to get too enamored with your carry gun. Just get something that works and you shoot well, right? Uh, it's reliable. And it's the same with, uh, with archery to some extent. If I just, I just love to get out in the early season and hunt, and I have that extra season to hunt. If I'm it's the muzzle loader season, I just want to get another deer. I don't I'm not in I don't need a hawk and rifle or a, a traditional rifle. I've got an in line, it's legal. I can go hunt early, you know, or during the muzzle loading season. Same with the bow. When I go hunting for bow season, I'm going to get deer. I, I don't know who Howard Hill was. Uh, you know, uh, it doesn't matter to me. I don't want some stupid wooden bow like this. I've got to work and get the strength in my arm and, you know, and, and have to practice with that. So that's kind of their thing. Uh, but I, as you know, I'm more into the actual shooting, and a lot of you are too. And so you would, uh, you would enjoy this, I think. It's just, it's just a lot of fun. And it doesn't take a long time to get enough strength to where you can do it just fine. Just don't get overbowed. Stay under 50 pounds, you know, and depending on your age, size, and all that. And here's something I use, a surgical tube kind of thing uh if you can't shoot for a few days or whatever you just keep one of these lying around somewhere it's a and it's just great exercise you don't even have to do it that many times it's just just grab it however you want to simulate the strength of your bow and you i use it to warm up like it's early today i don't want to mess up my shoulder so i just i just did this a few times and uh loosen up my my shoulder 
then I'll double it to duplicate maybe the power of that bow, get a little closer to it, just slowly get into it, you know, because because on my first shot, I want to be able to pull the bow all the way back without straining you know, muscle on my back or anything. So really, really good for that if you haven't discovered that yet. And it's just a lot of fun. So I'm going to shut up. I tried to give you financial advice and everything else. Now, I am not a financial advisor. I just... Uh, uh, just advising you to uh, maybe think about those things and uh, like I said I've been to the beach having shot a lot of firearms this week uh, but I'll be taking care of that okay if it doesn't rain too much shooting a few things and uh, uh, mainly I've just been busy really busy eating some great seafood some great seafood I love seafood so uh, to me, boy, going to the beach is just enjoying the view, the ocean, the, uh, the well, you know, I used to be a clothing designer too. And uh, for like 30 years, I, I designed bathing suits. And so it's very interesting to me to study the various types of bikinis because you know, I was involved in that industry for so long so it's uh, I, I can't help but really study uh, bikinis and the design of the material, the coloring, and just everything about them. So I do spend a lot of time, you know, staring and studying those at the beach. But uh, but the, the seafood is the other attraction. Uh, you know, I just 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 love it. You know, so not going for a suntan, really walking in the sand, and you know, and just. Uh, uh, in the, the the shallow water of the beach or up to knee, my knees. I mean, I just thoroughly enjoy that. I really do. I don't even have to swim. I, I'm not crazy about going out swimming in the ocean. I've done a lot of it, but I I just enjoy it. It just feels great on your toes, doesn't it? It just really does. I was watching the, the, a lot of families down there and the kids. It's fun watching the kids. They, they all react the same way. You can tell some of them it's their first time and and for any of them that are really young ones, they, they just run down that, and, and here comes the wave. You know, they're not really big usually at the Gulf, but but there's they can be a good size, and especially if you're that tall. And then they run around, they try to escape they're getting hit by the wave or getting that deep yet, you know, and, and they just have a blast. Everybody has fun at the beach. And, and it's just so interesting. You, you see people of, of all sizes, color, nationality and in relation with uh, ship to the ocean and the water you know everybody is exactly the same they just you can you can just see the joy and the feel that that uh, sand on your toes and the water and the waves and uh just the enjoyment of it so it's, it's neat uh you know we're all so much alike in so many ways it's a shame that we're all so divided right but uh when it comes to enjoying the beach we're all the same. We're just big kids, right? That water just feels good, no doubt about it. Then I behaved myself. I didn't scream shark. I saw a dolphin out there, and I uh, asked my wife, is that, is, that a, is that a dolphin or a shark? <laughs> I should have said, shark, shark. Been arrested, right? So anyway, I'll let y'all go. It's been good to talk to you. Again, so sorry to lose Jeff Quinn, uh, gun blast, and... Uh, uh, the way it goes and uh, we're only here for a while and we want to try to make the most of it hopefully uh, we're all trying to do something worthwhile something worthwhile uh, and uh, you know just something to think about I guess whenever somebody passes away that you knew yeah there they go you're gone and uh, and those of you to have lost people close to you uh, or, or just semi close to you, you know how gone they are. I've said that before. Uh, you don't really know the meaning of gone, you know, until you lose somebody uh, in your family, somebody close to you, because it's not like anything else. You can't rewind, you can't get them back for a second, for a minute, for an hour. They are gone. And uh, just like you will be, and I will be at some point. So uh, anyway, something to think about. Are you are you uh, shooting enough? Because you are going to be gone one day, and you might have ammo 
or arrows, you've not fired enough. You've not fired them, okay? Probably, I don't know, what would be the right age? I should be doing that. When you get to be like 50 or 60 years old, you should probably like spread out your ammo supply and work it out to where you don't have any left so that you're not gonna have any ammo left. Yeah, I don't know, what, when you're 80 or something like that? You know, try to use it all up. I can't think of anything really more pathetic than passing on to the next world, whatever that might be, and leaving thousands of rounds of ammo. You haven't shot, you could have fired it. Yeah, it's something to think about. Some kind of goofy to think about, right? Yeah, I know. Anyway, good to talk to you. Uh, hope you didn't pick up any ticks again this week. And speaking of shooting, I'm gonna shoot these arrows before I go pull those out. And I'm gonna try not to turn around and slap myself silly on that tree. I don't know if y'all can see the blood. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't have done that if it hadn't been on camera. I was in a hurry to get back. Uh, but you know, normally you just go pull out your arrows calmly, proceed on to shoot something else, right? So anyway, somebody with a brain would just edit that out, but I'm not going to do that. So we'll talk to you later, and uh, I appreciate you coming by. It's been a lot of fun having you out here with me. It really has. Life is good. <laughs>